early uh, for micro four third platform. But if you are from other other camera brands or things that they want to learn about their wide angle lenses or shooting wide angles in particular, uh, or just simply interested in micro four third stuff, because we are micro four third shooters and uh, you're very welcome as well. Um, please behave yourself, you know, and uh, uh, when you commenting, so no. No horrible messages. Are, are, you, no talk, horrible... are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so behave yourself. Behave yourself. I, use proper, I, I will, use proper I will, language. I will. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. I will. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, let's maybe introduce Lawa a little bit for those who are not familiar with Lawa. And uh, Peter, you you are obviously been working with them for a little bit of this as well. So you know you know something about Lawa. So who are they? Well, it's a, a Chinese slash Hong Kong lens maker who makes really interesting lenses for different mounts actually and micro of course we're talking about micro four thirds now and and uh, one of the most interesting lenses which is not unfortunately micro four thirds is their macro probe lens which is the if you have seen the big tube type lens which is really really great and I, that's something i would love to test and and i've got to say something what i really like <laughs> don't say anything naughty <laughs> And what I like about uh, Laova and other third-party lens makers is that they give uh, us more variety of lenses, and it's also pushing the the traditional camera companies to make better lenses. And, and I think Laova is, is one of my favorite third-party lenses because they, they really make good quality lens, and they're improving all the time, as we will see see today. And, and what I like about it is that it's uh, now part of uh, Micro Four Thirds, uh, a consortium or group or whatever they call it and uh, they make you know like they introduced a 10 to f2 lens which had the the electronic contact so the, so you have all the exif information you don't have to tell the camera what the lens is and, and it, it can read it from the lens and i think that that's a good good way or or any good direction that lauva is going absolutely and uh uh, just just to another thing as well just before we continue there is a little bit audio delay there so and uh, i can only basically there's about two seconds delay between peter and i so i'm trying to pause it instead of trying to butt in a little bit so uh, just uh, uh sorry about that if there is a little bit of a uh uh, uh kind of mismatch in, in terms of conversations there because uh, there is a little bit of delay there okay uh yeah thank you peter and uh, that's a very good basically precise introduction for Lauer lenses and I've been using them if you if you have been following my channel that you know that I've been using their lenses uh, for about two two and a half years now and uh, and I'm super impressed with them and uh, my very first um, uh, lens that I used was the their very small fish eye lens and uh, uh, it was it was a very funky lens to use or, 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 or you mean the, the one that when you when you're making images like this you can photograph your own hand <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for my own hand, my, my feet and everything, you can actually see that. And you can go really yeah. close. That lens is even closer than the 7.5, I'm telling you that. But anyway, let's oh, go back that, to this that's, now. That must, that must be the 4 millimeter, right? Yes. That yes, you're talking was, yes. about. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go back to that. So let me let me show you exactly what the lens is. So let me just move it over. Hopefully you guys can see it. So I'm going to do the product shots now. And uh, let's go jump right in. So this is, let me just, uh, hopefully you can, can see it. And uh, this is the lens. This is the latest Lauer 7.5 millimeters. And uh, this is um, basically the same lens as the one that they introduced about two, uh, about just about two years ago, the original 7.5 millimeter F2. Um, that is a complete full manual mechanical lens, uh, including the aperture. And uh, what Peter was just saying that, you know, since they joined the Michael Forther Alliance last year, and uh, they uh, they now have the proper information and data and design so that uh, for them to uh, incorporate into their, their own product so they can now make the lenses fully compatible electronically with uh, any Michael Forther lenses, not just Olympus, but like Panasonic, Blackmagic and, uh, and, and anything that with uh, electronic contacts, basically. Uh, uh, this is... Obviously, you know, to some people is a is a big plus. You know, both Peter and I are very impressed with it because we're going to tell you a little bit about that later. Um, um, uh, you know, how convenient it is to use a lens like this compared to the older version, which I have, which I'm going to show you right now. This is the old version, so you can see that right here now. And uh, hopefully, not 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 much of a difference, but you can probably spot the biggest difference there is on the lens. What it looks what it looks like. Yep. Yep. Right there. Basically, it's very similar. Yes, but yeah, this is the main difference. That's the aperture ring itself, and so the new lens obviously hasn't got any because uh, it's it's got the uh, full 
uh, electronic control through the camera dials instead of uh, physically turning the actual lens itself. Um, weight, size is very, very comparable. They are different. Uh, there are differences in terms of dimensions, but most of it is very, very similar. And uh, you can see that the, the actual front itself, I'm just trying to hold it to you and so you can see it. Oops. And uh, they are basically the same. Uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to, because I have set it to menu focus here, so it's, it's not zoom. Um, okay, there you go. So I'll just open it back for you guys to see the electronic contacts here. And uh, so you can see. So that's... Yeah, the, that, that is, that, right. that's important because then you have the exit data and, and there will be, you know, written what lens was used. And that's that's really important. I think it's it's easier to find if you have, you know, made images with certain lenses, then you can find them easier. And you don't have to remember to to set it from the camera because if if you let's say that you use different manual focus lenses without any connections, you most likely will forget change the information from camera when you switch lenses because that's what happened to me when I was looking at len take images taken with the older version, and then all of a sudden it says something else and I was said it's not it has it's not because it's in, in that day and that that video so there might be some misunderstand or mis understandment if you, if you forget to change the exit from camera yep indeed um but i think the ba the good thing about the the full electronic contact is um peter you obviously have a lot of experience using the full manual lenses on olympus camera as well uh, or in fact any digital cameras for uh, for any fully mechanical manual lenses is that you have to set the uh, or enable the focus assist manually you know uh, uh yes, peaking or that too or that too because the with the lens, if without the uh, oh, not this one, um, without contact, without electronic contact, um, the, the the camera actually doesn't even know you have a lens on it. It doesn't, and then uh, and so that means that <laughs> there's no way to tell uh, uh, the cam or the camera doesn't doesn't uh, even know whether they need to have uh, 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 have ibis on or anything, whether they needs to have uh, uh, or whether you're actually turning the focusing ring. So it doesn't know anything at all. Um, so that means every time when you use the lens and trying to focus something, if you want to have the focus assist, you will have to either customize one of the buttons to enable it, or you have to go to the menu to enable to enable it. So it's actually quite a quite a lengthy process. Uh, but with the electronic contact, it's different. You know, um, now the camera knows there's a lens on it, and now the camera knows what focal length it is, and then uh, and the camera will know exactly what IBIS strength it should be using to compensate that particular focal length. And better, you know, better still, you know, is all this auto uh, the peaking, auto magnify is all enabled automatically as soon as you turn the focusing ring. So that is, I think, one of the biggest benefit. Oh yeah, there are a couple of questions from Lava's Facebook that I was just received. Do they both have the same aperture blades? That was Trevor Eger asking. Um, Do you know that? No, they they don't. And the I th believe the original, um, the original uh, was nine nine blades. I think it was nine blades, eight blades. I know the new one is five blades, so it's less uh, aperture blades compared to the original. Um, so that's yes, that will that will that won't affect the the actual bulk quality. You know, there's not much bulk anywhere for these sort of wide angle lenses. But if you do interesting wide yeah. bulk, you know, most likely you're going to shoot a wide open, which basically no difference at all but if you do stop down the lens it will affect the the sun star so you know and uh, when you have to uh, point the the lens to the sun or anything with specular highlights you will see these uh, kind of star things coming on into the scene so instead of having eight lines or nine lines you have five lines and uh, that that's 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 the only difference oh yes and, and then there was another question christopher mahon was asking how does focusing focusing work peaking and the question came when Jimmy was talking about it. So yes, it does work with the new lens. You automatically, if you have turned peaking and magnify on, it will work like any other Olympus lens or, or lens that it's okay with Olympus cameras. So no problem with that, yeah, which so is one of the benefits yeah. of having the electronic contacts. Ab absolutely. So if you're already using an Olympus or Panasonic lens that have those features enabled, and uh, uh, you will be able to basically uh, do the same thing with these lenses and if just the only difference is it's not AF lens it's not autofocus you just have to manually turn it um, but if you use manual focus with Panasonic 
and Olympus lenses will work the same way. No, no difference at all. Yes. Okay. So it's good that we've got some questions popping in. That's, that's nice. And, uh, oh, and yeah. now we, shall we maybe talk a little bit about, um, the, uh, who is this lens for, you know, and uh, to start? Because there are, I know there are people asking uh, me, especially after the uh, uh, the original review that I did, you know, because because uh, at the time, you know, Lauer's already have the 9.5. And when I did the 10 mil, the same as you as well, people were asking, you know, well, should we get a 7.5 or the 9.5 or the 10? And, uh, uh, you know, the, it's, it's a tricky thing, you know, like and the, because they are fairly close to each other. Um, but I, I, I guess from my perspective, you know, they all, they're all quite different. You know, if you have a very specific needs for any of them and, uh, 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 you know, I'm pretty sure that you know exactly what type of photography you're doing. But uh, the reason I'm saying that is I think nine point, let's, let's get the 9.5 out of the way. Cause I think that's a little bit dated now because now they have the 10 millimeter, which is actually a much, much better lens. So the 10 and the 7.5. So I think that for the 10, which is the zero D, you know, and in Lauer's term, zero D is zero distortion. So that means that for uh, that the 10 millimeter lens is optically corrected. So you've got a lot of straight line is straight. So it's best for architectural work. And also for, oh, yeah. the, uh, for you, oh, yeah. for people who like to do a lot of cityscapes, a lot of buildings, high rises, because they, you want the lens, uh, the, the lines to be straight. Uh, you can correct it in post, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for 7.5, it's a much wider lens. And then uh, it has a little bit of a barrel distortion, but you get a much wider perspective, which means that if you are constantly shooting in very confined space, really tight spaces, and also uh, uh, landscape, you know, landscape, you don't really have to worry too much about distortion because, you know, things are not straight anyway. And, and unless you're shooting, you know, seascape and things like that, which is different. And, uh, uh, but so it really depends what sort of thing you do. And because uh, uh, 7.5 and 10, you know, even though it doesn't sound a lot, 2.5 millimeters, but if, if you work it out in, in equivalent 35 mil, full frame terms, you know, there is still, you know, five mil difference, which is actually quite a bit, you know, if you look into side by side images, you will see that the 7.5 does give you a little bit more um, the, into the scene. So yep. if you do need the, that space, then the 7.5 is really good. And for me, I love the 7.5 more than the 10 millimeters because of that. And uh, uh, especially when you do vlogging, for instance, so you can do it facing yourself. You don't, if you don't have a particularly long arm and uh, the wide, the extra wide angle will help that distance. And, <laughs> and so, so you're not too big in the, into the screen. Yes. Yeah. And then we have to remember that the seven and a half millimeter have three different uh, versions. Now you have the, the new one, then the older one, then you also have the one for video. And then you also have the one for drones. The, yes. the one for drones is a bit lighter, not no, much, I but have... just just enough. You have the, the the video version of the lens with the. Yes, I have the video version, which is this one here. You can see that this is the video version, which have the gear actually on the barrel itself. And so this is for use with uh, follow focus unit, uh, whether on the gimbal or actually on the handheld unit. Uh, so this is really, really good for that. Um, this is basically the same. Uh, Weight-wise, uh, uh, compared to the original 7.5, and like what uh, Peter was saying, the the drone version, which is a lightweight version, is about uh, I believe it was 20 gram lighter. So it's uh, it's, it's quite a bit lighter. Uh, again, it doesn't sound a lot, but when you work it on a gimbal and things like that, especially on a drone, because the the gimbal is a lot smaller, the, it's not particularly uh, strong, you know, to cope with extra weight and these sort of weight saving will help the gimbal a lot and uh, for stability pur uh, purposes for the footage you know do you want to be really extra smooth and you do and uh, this sort of lightweight will help dramatically um yeah so let me just put it back to us again yes so right, any other we are questions again. That, and uh let me see if uh, anyone want to ask any more questions about these lenses we will continue to show you some images actually i think that's the next part um, Peter, maybe we'll go with you first, and uh, since people All right, we can start my, with... may already see my images, <laughs> so let's go to you first. Uh, uh, well, I have some images that I took with the 10 millimeter because it's about general wide angle. Here you can see a, an image taken with the 10 millimeter Lava F 2.0, and that is the, the corrected version. Of course, it's a bit tilted because the, the lens is a bit tilted, and uh, in general, when you're using wide angle, it's better to have something in the front something in the in the front so that you have like I always say that you have different layers if, if there's nothing in the front you know everything looks empty and, and most likely images are a bit boring unless 
you're going for that emptiness that's a different thing and if we take a look at the next image and you can also do some bird photography with the 10 millimeter lens and uh, i was uh, uh, lying on my stomach on on, on the on the <laughs> what do you call the the gravel over there and then stick my arm out and uh, those swans can be pretty fierce so i i would have wanted to be even closer but when they started to getting interested in my camera and they are pretty strong birds so i had to grab it quickly and of course the the, the problem was with the with the focusing so i had to pre-focus and, and hope that they are in in, in focus and but you know it's not that crucial when you when you're stopping down and having a it's just a wide angle lens but this is the the 10 millimeter and then you know my regular street photography it works for that too this one is a bit cropped but not much it works for for this type of uh, street photography too and and if you just uh, of course there are with if you're using wide angle lenses for street photography really wide i mean ultra wide you, you just uh, want to avoid having people on the uh, you know on these corners or, or something like that just try to have them in the middle because there might be some some distortion especially if you're tilting the camera and like i do most of the time i never have the camera straight <laughs> and this one is also a 10 millimeter and you can see that uh, i think this was with f22 and you can see the the star is pretty cool, and I really like the the the, the star that this ten millimeter lens makes. And I think on this one, this one has been on on Lauva's, uh, marketing material actually, this image. And you know, ten second uh, exposure, camera was on the ground, and uh, you know, you can see the stars. I, I think this makes one of the best looking stars I think I've seen. It's even better 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 than than many of the m zuiko lenses have have as the star and uh, and then the, that's not very really interesting but this one is made made with the older version of the 7.5 f2 lens and this is the main library in helsinki and, and this was in my video that i made it i think in 2019 i made a video about that lens and there were some images of the of the fairly new library that we have here in downtown Helsinki and you know there's this glass corner so there are a lot of reflections on that and the the uh, odd looking stuff that is it's not noise it's it's on the glass because that that will uh, you know some kind of like um, what do you call the, um, the it will block the, the the sunlight a bit so it won't get so hot during the summer and this one also with the older one and you can see the star is a bit different on this seven and a half millimeter lens i think this was f8 with this and these are the staircase that's in inside the library and uh and now we have some images from my video that will be on or, or published on sunday about this lens it's it's a bit longer video than i usually do but it's it's a kind of like a photo walk video where I walked around in in a beach town, two hour drive from Helsinki, and and it was um, I made the video about almost two months ago, so it wasn't really summer and beach time yet, but uh, it was um, as you can see from this, this is not cropped at all and and fairly straight the camera, and you can see that they're not bad distortions you can see, but you can see a bit of a vignetting on the on the on the corners, but usually that's not a big problem because you can easily fix that in post if you don't like it. You can just you know use this the vignetting slider and and make it a bit lighter, and also the the vignetting is something that we many times do. We want to uh, make some vignettes on the on the corners because then we can kind of like uh, lead our viewer's eye to the middle of the of the frame. And this is a bit closer too, and you can see the. The image quality is there's nothing wrong with the image quality. I think it's it's you know Lawa is getting better and better all the time. And I think for that it's it's really great. And, and uh, funny thing is that I'm not really used to using wide angle lenses. That's probably because uh, when I got my first camera, it was a 50 millimeter lens, and the first lens that I bought was a 135 millimeter lens, and so I kind of used to using from the longer end and never really had really wide angle lenses or, or ultra wide angle lenses for many many years when i started and kind of like so it's 
always for me when using ultra wide angle lens it's always some experimenting and, and learning new things even though i've been photographing for over 30 years so it's still now that's that's the fun part of photography that you never never kind of learn it you always find new things and and this is an example of having something in the front where you have this empty beach and you have the the, the carousel where kids are you know going around during the summer and then you have the the tr trees in the front to give some some uh, depth and layers to the image so that otherwise it would be a bit bit too boring but there is still the story that it's an it's an empty empty place and then you know close-ups <coughs> excuse <coughs> excuse me some close-ups of uh, of some graffiti on a, on a bench which of course you know I, I love graffiti if you probably figured that out if you are we're watching my videos but of course you know a bench it's not that nice but but i still wanted to photograph them you know this is just something something that i came across when i was doing the photo walk but from here you you too can see that it's 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 a good quality quality lens and here you can see the real uh wide angle effect and and when you're tilting the camera you can see from the upper right hand corner that the villa is a bit tilted but that's because the the, the lens is tilted it's a bit downwards and that that's that's why if you're doing street or some photography try to keep the camera level if, if that's important for you because otherwise the the corners might be a bit skewed let's see what else do we have here yeah there's another another image of the beach with with from from under the trees and between the between the the branches of, of that tree and, and there that's you know a place where people you know change their swimming suit when they come during the summer as you could probably see also they haven't cleaned it yet because it was in april when i made this these images and then also tried some some black and white and usually when i go out and shoot doing a photo walk it starts raining i don't know why and this happened also this time because it, when i started the the walk the sun was shining people were playing tennis outdoors you can see it on the video because i was walking by the tennis courts and then when i got to the beach it was raining and, and snowing actually but here you can see also that having something in the front makes the uh, image more interesting and it also makes the front front element or the front stuff a big a lot bigger and you can see the horizon is going way back and it's kind of making the the front uh, a lot more more uh the, obvious and, and bigger so this is also a way of uh, of photographing it if you just stick the lens very close to a thing it, it will be appear a lot, a lot uh, bigger in the in the photograph and this one also i had the camera very low almost in inside the the rock or the what do you i don't know what that's called the 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 it's not a hole but that thing between those rocks and you know just to make something interesting to to put the camera close and make it really big and then you can see the the water or the the rain in the in the in the horizon with the trees and you can see or the, the the sky and then you also see the that is actually sun is shining behind back there in the distance and it was very very interesting weather but you will see and then this is uh, some images from from my photo walk also when i just you know this is from helsinki a statue by by a, bi a bis busy street as you can see there is no cars around because you know fin fins aren't kind of like um, not <laughs> being around that much when it when there is a lockdown like we have this saying that uh, it's been too too to, uh, the social distancing is two meters so we are waiting to get back to five meters and this is the other way or the other side of the of the of the statue and you can see the how it, it kind of distorts the the front it makes the hands a lot lot bigger than the head because it's uh, a lot closer to the lens and and this is a an effect that you can use if you want but but be careful with this way of shooting because this is not the the proportions of the statue is not like that but it's it's an it's an interesting effect and it can be used different ways i'm not sure if a statue is the the best uh, possible subject for a, or or subject to to shoot the, with the ultra wide angle lens when there is plenty of room using other lenses but it, it can make some a bit different looking images and 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 uh, it has uh, 
very close uh, focusing distance. I think it's even 12 centimeters. And you can get really, really close with that lens. And that's, this is uh, one example where you have the, the flower really close and then you can see the, the background and it's kind of in the, in, in the environment. And that's, that's kind of something that I actually like quite a lot with, with wide angles where you can get really close and, and have a bit, a bit of a different looking close up. It's not macro lens, of course, but, but you can call it a close up lens where you can get pretty big images of flowers or the flowers are pretty big in the image and then also this was uh, made in the in the cherry tree park here in Helsinki when there was this um, cherry blossoms were were at the, at its best for it only lasts like a day or two here in here in Helsinki and uh, there's usually a, a big party around this uh, kind of like a hanami party around this trees but of course now it was cancelled the party but but a lot of people were there anyways and and I made images and here you can see how the the bokeh looks I think it looks pretty pretty decent it's a bit busy but uh, I think it looks pretty decent and you can see from the corners that the that the bokeh balls are a bit uh, kind of like oval shaped but otherwise it's um, it's pretty good and this is also as close as possible making this image and it's uh this one was a bit tricky because it was a windy day so what i did was manual focus and, and heavy wind and, and moving uh, leaves it's not an easy task so so what i did i just you know burst a bunch of images and, and looked if i got any any sharp ones and there were a few of course but some of them were of course unsharp because the the branch was moving all the time because of the heavy wind so but that's that's some way of uh, of uh, making it okay the image just to make enough <laughs> and then i think this is the the last image here's another example of of having the flower in 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 the environment and i think this is one of the nicest way of of doing it in nature if you want to do this and it's of course it's the same time you can do some really nice landscapes too with the with that lens so it's it's a quite versatile lens. Let me see if there are any other lens image. No, that was the last one. Perfect. Thank you. So it's a versatile that. lens. You can do you, you yeah. It's a versatile lens, and you can do a lot a lot of different things with it. Yeah, I love I love particularly your black and white and uh, by the beach. I think those those are those are quite nice. And the last image, I think Thanks. it really shows uh, uh, you know uh, what you can do with ultra wide you know this is not wide angle this is the actual ultra wide angle lens here 7.5 yes, even yeah. in full frame this this is 15 millimeters this is a really really wide angle lens and uh, so compositions you know uh, uh, you know it all comes from your head you know creativity wise how you can utilize in wide angle lens like this i think the last image that peter showed there we really kind of demonstrated what you can do uh, in terms of composition and also subject focus uh, simply using a uh, uh, depth of field with an ultra wide angle lens like this and uh, it is something that is really interesting because a lot of people sometimes when they look, they look at flowers on the floor uh, on the ground they would probably just go up close and shoot with it and uh, with a macro lens or with a standard lens and they just blur everything out which is nice which is nice but uh, like we talked about a lot you know in terms of depth of view and and the angle the angle of views in in in, in photography is uh, uh, you know, to show the environment, you know, where it is, uh, is, is very important. In this particular case, obviously, that uh, uh, what Peter did was shooting wide open and isolate the actual white flower from the background, which is a fantastic way of basically uh, uh, showing you, you know, what where the uh, point of focus is, which is the flower. And uh, 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 this is a very clever way of highlighting the subject. So it's really, really good. I, I, I do think that's really interesting. And uh, we have some questions. Before I move on to my images, we let's let's talk, let's answer some questions from uh, from from you guys. And uh, we got some from Jenny just popped up. So um, Peter, what do you think of Lauer for astrophotography? Very yeah, perfect. Quite fast and wide. That's the simple answer. Yes, it is good. <laughs> uh, uh, because uh, of course, if you're using manual focus, it's it's a bit tricky to focus. But you just use the magnify and um, and, and 
and and, and sharpen or or make the focus to a star. You cannot do infinity because it's it's a bit different thing. It's it's funny funny when you're doing infinity. It's 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 actually closer than infinity to stars. Yeah, that, so, that, that so is why to... the, um, that's why Olympus has the uh, the uh, the starry sky AF because you can't just set it to infinity. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So that, okay. I think it, it's it's perfect for that. Okay, the next question is uh, from Christopher. Uh, is the is this comparable to Olympus twelve millimeters, or is it dramatically different? I think he refers to focal length. Yeah, this is a lot wider, a lot wider. Otherwise, it's quite quite similar. You know, the the F number is of course it's the twelve millimeter is autofocus, but otherwise it's 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 about the same size, and the the image quality both are good but the seven and a half is a lot wider so just to just to show you just uh just in case you know uh, obviously i can't i don't i can't swap the lens at the moment but imagine like this is 12 millimeters and uh sorry no no this is this is 12 millimeters this is 12 millimeters yeah, yeah. this yes this will be this will be 7.5 so you can see quite a bit more yes. and uh, uh by comparison um, the reason I know because I have both, so uh, I, I can tell you right now, this seven point five is definitely a lot wider, so it can absorb the the actual uh, uh, scenes, you know, uh, quite quite well. So if you um, uh, want to capture basically everything that you see in front of you without too much distortion, you know, not like a fish eye, this seven point five yeah. is really perfect for that. And yes. we have another question. Um, can you store multiple lens profiles of manual lenses in Olympus cameras like the EM5 II and the EM12? Well, this will be up your street, Peter, since you are the guru in the computer in the Olympus cameras. I'm the guru. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> uh, I, I have to check how. I'm not sure how many there are, but well, there it is. I'm just thinking where's the battery, but there it is. Let me put a battery on, and uh, let me check. It is lens info. Uh -huh. Lens info settings. I have eight on my on my camera right now, and it's uh, so yes, at least Good. twelve you can do or more. You know what? I don't know that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, no, I don't tell anyone. Don't worry. That's why I never do. No. That's why I never do tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so we we we'll wait until the next wave of questions. I know I saw some of the questions actually through my channel directly. And uh, but before before we jump into any other question, let's continue a little bit about shooting wide angle. I know we haven't quite. You touched base of quite a lot already in in your demonstration and your photographs. Uh, you know, uh, putting foreground inches will make the uh, shooting wide angle more interesting. And uh, uh, and I I think you also mentioned something that I kind of caught my attention, which was uh, when you talk about shooting the statue that you have. And uh, uh, you know, you mentioned about uh, this may not be the perfect subject for it, which is you know very very valid. But I have seen a lot of uh, uh, fashion photographers, in particular, using ultra wide angle lenses to create drama yeah. into 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 the photos. Of course, uh, yes. Which which works yeah, very yeah, very yeah. well. Yeah, it works because it's different. It looks different from the from the normal, and, and especially if you for for example, if you do some. Uh, photographing of shoes, for example, that could be probably a pretty good image if you, if the, you know, you put the the lens or, or the camera real close to the, the to the shoe and then upwards a bit, then you have a big shoe and, and a small model. That would probably be something to to try. And yeah, and usually absolutely. when we talk about lenses and, and there's there's a lot of questions that probably Jimmy gets two of these. That what lens should I? use when I doing portrait what lens should I do when I do this and and of course there are some you know things that that uh, wide angles are landscapes cityscapes and of course situations where you just it's tight spot you need the wider angle but you can do anything with any lens just if it it depends on on your style and how to do it and and I haven't really done any portraiture with the with the 7 out of 5 but that would probably be something interesting to do to try I haven't tried it yet but maybe I will yeah 
and, and see how that I'm, comes I'm out. Actually because, gonna, of course, I'm actually going to show you some images later, uh, which is not shot with the 7.5, but I just want to demonstrate uh, what you can do with ultra wide angle lenses uh, in different situations. Oh. And uh, uh, the reason I want to collect that is because uh, obviously I. London was still pretty much, uh, you know, restricted, and uh, I haven't been out shooting with models lately, so I haven't actually got any sample using the 7.5. Otherwise, I would have, and uh, and that's why I would like to bring up those images so you can see, uh, you know, in your head, you know, what you can achieve with ultra wide angle lenses, and uh, but it, it's good because I wanted to, to touch base on using ultra wide angle lens shooting portraits or shooting fashion shoots, and uh, for instance, if you uh, uh, what Peter just did there in one of his uh, uh, images showing the uh, the statue. And uh, you can see the distortion going around the actual subject itself and these that the bulging kind of bulging forward uh, create that distortions yeah, uh, okay. it may not look it may not look very pleasant if you're shooting directly like this why don't if you, you shoot... why don't you turn it on the image okay you can, let's go you back can to your switch image. it and I have it um, yeah there you go so you mean, if you, if you mean this one looking at that yeah this is the one you can see that the um, it's almost like this guy is leaning I mean, it's the position of his issue is kind of like crouching, leaning forward, but the, the use of yes. ultra wide angle lens really exaggerate that motions there and create some kind of a, a weird look to it. However, you know, if you, uh, if you start shooting a little bit cleverly, you know, and by angling you the actual uh, camera, so let me just come back to us now. So let me see, like I have a camera here with the, with the 7.5 or any, any ultra wide to be quite honest. So if you, this, this is what basically Peter did, just shooting straight on. With, with the thing quite close up and that's creating that distortion there. And if you just step back a little bit and uh, what you can achieve is if you tilt up a little bit, what that means is you will make that person actually quite a bit longer and thinner. You know, this is always one of those tricks that a lot of the uh, the wedding photographers or, or, or portrait photographers always use with ultra wide angle lenses, especially uh, uh, shooting with, uh, 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 you know, some slightly bigger persons, um, uh, you know, uh, they will dramatically make the, make them look kind of thinner without doing any Photoshop. So this is kind of always a trick that we we use uh, in the trade. Uh, so these actually sometimes can be very very useful. So depending on the the type of person uh, people you, uh, they are, and uh, uh, you know you can always do headshots and stuff like that. That's that totally fine. Half body may not show the body that much, and and that's totally okay. But when you do a full body shot. If the the uh, the subject is slightly bigger, if you want to make them look slimmer, you can always use an ultra wide or wide angle lenses and just use some clever trick in terms of angles to make them look, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, you know, uh, slightly slimmer. So that will definitely please them quite quite well. Um, but this is a very uh, traditional way of doing things, especially with models. You know, in fashion, that's why I, that's why I talked about fashion or mentioned the word fashion, is because uh, these models. Let's say go back to the film days before Photoshop. You know, Photoshop is so easy to stretch the image like in post now nowadays. But in the in the in the olden days, you catch it on the film and the negative, and you fix. You know, you can't do too much about stretching and things like that. You know, you can do airbrushing and things like that, but you can't do stretching. And that means photographer will have to use angle, you know, wide angle lenses to distort the images, like actually in the film. And uh, that means uh, that's that's why we know all these tricks because we we you know we, we came from the older background and then uh, and and these days people simply just do it in pose and just stretch the images and fairly easily make them look slimmer but uh, but this is what how we how we do things in the past and in fashion that's how they make the models legs longer and <laughs> that's exactly how they do it and uh, yeah this yep. this is actually a, a very very good way so if you want to make uh, someone look extremely thin you can try the seven point five, <laughs> and just just just, just <laughs> play it, just play around with it, and you'll see, you'll see. I, I can tell you that. Um, well, but anyway, but don't but don't get too close to the face. If you go too too close no. to the face, they would it will be like. Pfft. Yeah. So <laughs> don't use it to do headshot. <laughs> you, you no. Would, no, definitely not. And uh, because you no. you basically make, that won't make work. The nose nose really big, you know, kind of like the face will be completely stretched. It will it will look horrible, oh, and. Yeah. Uh, but yes. what, what, what other tips you can give for people shooting ultra wide? You know, I talked about shooting people because that's kind of my speciality there. I mean, I shoot a lot of people. That's why I know, yeah. you know, the usage of ultra wide there. But in general, well, in in general, I, I already covered quite a few of those when I was showing my images. The first thing is to to make the image interesting with having something in the front. Usually, if you don't have anything in the front, the image is boring. Like I already said a few times, actually. And that's that's really important. Of course, if if the thing is that you want to show the vast emptiness, then it's a, of course, a different thing. But that's that's something to tell the story. So you are kind of taking advantage of the of the lens and the, the wide angle lens. 
and also getting close with for example with the 7 f 7.5 f2 you can really get close and, and have some interesting uh, images of different things and also show the surroundings and the environment at the same time to give more story because usually like jimmy i think he said about macro photography that people are just you know taking an image of a flower okay it's a nice flower but so what if you have the surroundings there it's a more of a story tell a lot more what's going on you might even have include people in there you know walking in the background and, and, and kind of like a make it a different different totally different type of image and then of course if you're in a tight spot and you just need the the wide angle that's, that's of course the the most obvious also the the use of, of wide angle and um, but i wouldn't maybe i was talking about street photography but i don't know if, if a seven and a half f2 would be a good for street photography maybe for some style it could but not not really my style of stuff it, it i don't think it works but if if it's not something that you cannot do. Of course you can, but it, it depends on your style. I think Jimmy does that because he was, uh, you know, <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fine, Jimmy. Okay, well, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> but no, no, no. I think I think you actually said it earlier. You know, like you can use any lens, any focal length to create any yes. images. You know, and, oh yes. And there is there just, is no just, limit. You just have it. to know. Yeah, yeah. You just have to know the character of the lens. The telephoto lenses have different characters. Standard lenses. And then wide angle and ultra wide angle is kind of like a wide angle on steroids. So it's it's a bit more <laughs> extreme and, and you just have to know how they behave and then take that as a tool or advance, take advantage of the of the way the lenses behave and you, you will start improving. Yep. Okay, great. Um, great tips there, Peter. Okay, now maybe is, we still got about around about 20 minutes so let's jump onto my images and i can show you uh what i took with the 7.5 new and old and those basically the same thing and then uh, and i also have the uh the images that i just told you about using ultra wide to shoot a variety of subjects so you can know what sort of thing you can do with uh with an ultra wide lens and uh so let's let's jump right onto it so let me come onto my images now so first of all this is uh, uh, basically what you can absorb, you know, using an ultra wide lens. This is shot in Greenwich, and uh, uh, with the Cutty Sark uh, right in front of me, and I was not far from it. But what and uh, what a seven point five can do is dramatize everything. You can see uh, once I tilt up the lens, what we, what Peter uh, mentioned earlier, you can clearly see, uh, you know, what you can achieve with it. So this is shot with the older. 7.5 the original 7.5 you can see the sun there you can see the sun star is very very different to uh, the new lens and because uh, uh, you got less aperture blade so you got more you know stray light coming through um, uh, at the angle the kind of cross sections of the actual blade itself um, so it's a it's a more like a personal preference I wouldn't say which one is best or worse you know it just really depending on your uh, your preference of what you know what the sun star should look like and now we're going to the uh, the next image and uh, there we go. This is a shot with the new lens <laughs> and uh, with my son looking at uh, the lake nearby uh, where I live. And uh, so once again, you know, you, uh, the the giveaway that this shot was done with an ultra wide is to see the actual uh, uh, elongated shadow coming from, coming up from his, uh, you know, from his feet. Uh, that is really is the giveaway of uh, that I was using ultra wide because without the shadow, you know, you don't, you really can't tell whether this was shot with a uh, a twenty four or maybe uh, sorry twenty four. I'm just you know twelve millimeters, twelve or or, or even uh, seventeen millimeters. It's hard to tell in that way. But with the shadow, you can really tell that it's been stretched. And then uh, this is shot with an ultra wide lens. And the next shot is also shot with, um, uh, you know, with my daughter this time, and, and both of them together stand side by side using ultra wide. Uh, now you can see that now I cut out the bottom shadow there, so it's harder to tell now whether this is actually shot with an ultra wide in this particular case. So, um, so you know, a lot of people always you know talk about using ultra wide angle lenses will distort stuff, will will make your images look weird, and I don't think that you have used the lens properly or, or know how to use it because ultra wide, yes, you can distort the image if you wish. If you don't, you just have to uh, make sure that your distance to your subject is correct, making sure the environment is correct, and uh, uh, you can utilize it. Um, uh, it's not it's not difficult at all once you get to know the the character. What Peter just said about the character of the lens, and you will know. So this 
is another one that's shot with the new lens and uh, uh, again this one I put, I deliberately uh, exaggerate the 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 you know the uh, the closest uh, wooden pole in front of it uh, you know clearly I just do that and also stop down the lens this is how things shot at f8 or uh, maybe even f11 if I remember that correctly I don't have the exit data here and uh, so this is a, a very very interesting um, uh, a way of using ultra wide to exaggerate Pretty much sim very similar to what Peter shown at the last image there with the flower there, just to focus on things. But in instead of using uh, shallow depth of field, because in this case I want to show the whole fence and the actual en entire scene of the entire environment, I stop down the lens. And uh, you can tell that the depth of field, this is one good thing about Michael Forza, is that you don't have to do too much photo stacking in, in landscape because, you know, once you stop the lens down, you pretty much get everything in focus, especially in a wide angle lens like this. So this is really, really easy to achieve. So it's something, uh, this is sort of kind of look and feel that you're, you're really interested in. And this is very easy to use with this particular lens here. And here's another scene just uh, shot by uh, in a similar area here. Just I was just walking around my my my, my neighborhood, and uh, uh, yeah, it's I mean, what well, I talked about a little bit of borrow distortion, you know, in my review, and also talked about it in this particular stream. And I don't actually see it's a problem at all. You can see that here. I've got some straight line here, and you really cannot see the distortion whatsoever. Uh, that there is some, but you only really, really see it or, or, or become visible is when you're shooting brick walls or things that have perfect straight line everywhere. And that, that's where you can uh, tell there is distortion. But otherwise, like I said, is perfect. Is no, is nothing wrong with it, and uh, you can see the images is clear and sharp, and there is really no, n not much even fringing is going on. So the the actual image quality is really really good. And that's another shot of my 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 daughter jumping, and uh, I you know she's just being my model that on the day, <laughs> and uh, just uh, do do a few snaps just to show you exactly what uh, the. Uh, the detail that this shot can actually capture. You can see uh, this is one, once again, I stopped down this one to, uh, I actually quite remember this one. This is 6.3 aperture. So even at 6.3, you can, you pretty much get everything in focus. And um, uh, although that, I don't know, well, obviously I'm not blowing up the image there, the, but the background, the, the the furthest distance that is actually slightly blurred, which is slightly out of focus because I'm focusing on her more than, than the background itself. And, uh, but you can see, the foreground, the green gra uh, the grass here is very, very sharp. There, there is the, the the just to highlight the actual resolving power from this this particular lens is is just amazing. And here's another shot. This one is top down again to f8. This one and uh, 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 yeah, the, you know, I don't have to say anything now. You can just clearly see the sun star, the actual flare resistance of the lens, and also the detail that it can capture. So it's actually really, really, really impressive. And that's why I love the original, you know, because uh, 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 I can get that sort of shot very, very easily on the OMD. Um, now, the bokeh, you know, like we, we, we talked about bokeh a little bit, and this lens can get bokeh if you shoot at the closest distance. Um, this shot at f2 with the little flowers in front of me, and you can see all these bokeh ball behind it is very, very pleasing. There's no hard edges, there's no fringings, and uh, uh, it's it just good. You know, if this lens is a... 25 or maybe 50 you know this will be very very creamy and uh, obviously this is an ultra wide angle lens so it's a very different characteristics and uh, but yeah overall it, I don't think there is anything wrong with this lens in terms of rendering and here's another stop down lens using the original 7.5 and uh, you know, once again you can see in terms of in terms of image quality that there's no difference whatsoever the old one and the new ones is basically identical and um, the only difference between the two is the aperture blade if you talk about rendering or the actual sun star shapes itself but other than that they are basically the same thing and here is like okay in this i i, I want to show you this one is because i want to highlight to you about the distortion that i mentioned earlier there is a little bit you can see from the side there the it's a slight curve you can see the brick wall there is there is a little bit of it um, but only if you really want to hunt for it and otherwise you really can't see it and like this shot here if I don't you know like you can't tell there's distortion anywhere it's just like a normal high quality ultra wide angle lens that you can find on the market um, yeah this is this is really fantastic and here's another shot with the uh, the 7.5 and uh, yeah it, it's it's a fun lens to use especially uh, you know for the size and for the weight you can you can bang it on a very slim body like the pen or the uh, the em5 or the em10 and uh, and just go around all day without even feeling it so it's actually <laughs> pretty pretty awesome 
So this is actually the uh, end of my photo, but I will show you now another set of photos, like I mentioned earlier about using ultra wide angle lens on street photography, Peter. <laughs> okay, this All is right, uh, cool. This is, the, no, no. this is the like ultra wide. Uh, uh, this is the full frame lens. So this is the. Uh, I'm trying to remember the focal length now. This is, I believe, is 21. 21 in 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 full frame is pretty wide and. Uh, and uh, so this is, uh, so you can tell like 21, so that would be around 10 millimeters in, 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 in micro four thirds. So you can get the lower 10 millimeter to basically achieve the same shot as this, if you know how to angle your shots and how low you want to get it. And uh, so that's, you know, one usage of you uh, to basically exaggerate the whole scene. And uh, uh, this this shot uh, is, is uh, uh, it was actually done quite a few years ago with, uh, with one of the test lenses I was using. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun, you know, to be honest, you sh if you haven't been using ultra wide angle lenses to do street or any other thing, you know, it's, it's a fun exercise just to go and try it out. And you haven't got any wide, uh, ultra wide, you know, you know, you should, you should try it. I think it's, you, you should, you know, you will find it quite interesting. So this particular selfie that I do for myself is, <laughs> is, um, is the Olympus 12 millimeter. So people were talking about it a little bit earlier about 12 millimeter from Olympus. What does it look like, you know, when they compare to this, uh, to the lower, the, the ultra wide. And, uh, so, you know, it depends on what sort of angle you, uh, you, you're setting your cameras in how much you're tilting up and down, because uh, what we discuss is the ultra wide will distort the images. And, uh, the 12 is not kind of, ultra ultra wide and uh, it's still wide but it's yeah nowhere near the 7.5 there so this if i use a uh, the the 7.5 this will look completely different not only i will be smaller but also the distortion and the, by tilting upward means which means that I, my leg would actually get a little bit longer that uh, so i i could i should have used the 7.5 instead of 12 because that would make me look a bit taller but in this case it's fine and um, just want to show you this now this is another shot i've done with the eight millimeters uh, back in my Canon days. And uh, so you can once again tell uh, what you can achieve with an ultra wide. And uh, yeah, it's, it's something that is really good if you want to capture everything because uh, I couldn't do it with the 12 millimeters. I couldn't do it with the uh, the uh, uh, the 10 millimeters. This has to be ultra wide because I, will, I don't have any more distance be behind me. You know, I was basically facing a wall. So if I want to capture this particular building, there's no way I could do it without an ultra wide. So this is another thing that you know. Uh, the, uh, is you have to gauge what sort of thing you need to do. I always have an ultra wide in my bag be uh, when I do traveling because I I just never know how much space I would have when I arrive uh, when I want to capture everything. And this is uh, this shot is actually from one of my ongoing projects, and uh, which is actually interesting because uh, uh, this will be eventually will become a book. And uh, I actually done half this project with my full frame Canon and the other half with my Michael Four Third. <laughs> I want, I mean, when that's completed. I hope, I hope you can tell the difference between the two but i bet you can't tell the difference to be quite honest because the way i shoot it uh, I, you know it's a documentary project that i'm doing and uh, documenting this area the changes of it over over the course of 20 years so this project is long you know i've really it's already been 20 uh, 12, 12 13 years past already so i've got seven years to go and uh, and uh, by then i'll be you know uh, very old <laughs> okay let's see the next one so this is another wedding i uh, using ultra wide for a wedding this is shot with uh, an eight millimeters again. And uh, so, like I said, you know, the uh, there's nothing stopping you for using ultra wide to achieve what you want to achieve. Uh, in this particular case, you know, is fairly similar to what, what Peter has done in his last image. But however, once again, I stopped down the lens to get everything in focus because I want the texture in this particular case. I want to show um, and the, the building, the clouds, formations and everything. I do not want to have anything blur. Um, so the only way to highlight this subject is to use light and in this case I'll be using artificial light so I I basically superficially uh, underexpose the entire scene and by using ex uh, extra speed light remote trigger and to create a, a stronger light to highlight the subject so uh, it's a very simple way to do it and but it's very effective yet again using ultra wide angle lens and here is another classic example and on the wedding using ultra wide this is olympus this is 7 to 14 f 2.8 pro <laughs> and uh, so this is shot at seven millimeter uh, seven millimeters i once again i use this because two things i want to exaggerate the scene and uh, that's that's for the to dramatize the whole sort of situation but secondly is because i want to get the balcony from the top uh, top half of the 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 uh, 
the uh, the photos there because if I use a 12 or or, or or 17 and I would not be able to capture that uh, at the top section there so you know it's important to have a neutral wire in my case and uh, so if if you are you know starting to, to do some weddings with the micro micro four third systems and uh, doing some uh, landscape of course you know I think ultra wide is something that you cannot miss you know you, you should add that in your arsenal whether it's going to be lower or anything else you know uh, it's, it's always good to have and uh, I think that's probably all the photos I want to show you but you know you 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 get what I mean about using ultra wide for a variety of uses because uh, uh, I I personally think that you know is 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 a fun focal length. It may not be for everyone, you know. Like uh, I think for versatility, you know, you, you want to go for something more standard. You know, uh, Peter would agree. You know, you probably go for the twelve to forty. You know, you can kind of cover a good variety of focal lengths there, and you can do basically everything. But once you master that focal length you know to do whatever you really wanted to do you may want to step out of the comfort zone and start exploring other options you know that's why people will jump into the macro jump into ultra wide lenses like these or super tele you know just to get different perspectives so, you know if you've already gone past that stage you know yeah you should really try that and seven this 7.5 is affordable it's good quality and i think uh, 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 peter would agree that it, it, it shoots beautiful images Oh yes, again, and a couple of comments on on Jimmy on your images, and, and as you saw from from those that you have the people in 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 images were taken with seven and a half, we're really ultra wide angle lens. Jimmy placed them in the in the middle, yep. in most of those shots that where you have people because of of course if you have them on the sides there might be some distortions, especially if the camera is a bit tilted. Yep. So so yep. that that's why it's it's a yep good. Uh, a good Very example, good. Especially, actually. Especially, uh, especially, yeah. Yeah. Um, at the just go end, ahead. Just sorry. At the end of my my review on the seven point five, the one that I just released today. If you look to the end of the video, you see me distorted because I was on the edge of the frame, and then that's why I don't yeah. place subject on the edge because we, you will see. I basically I would gain like I talked about making people slimmer. I talked about making people's legs longer, but that only works if you place them in the middle. If you put them on the side. Oh, yes. The face or the subject was stretched. That means you actually make them look bigger and fatter. So you definitely do not want to put yeah. them on the side. And and also, and and also, you might be tempted to use one of these really wide-angle lenses for group shots. But be careful if you have people on the on the edges, then they will be kind of distorted. And and that's, a, you know, it's a good lens for group shots. But there is a downside if 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 the group is filling the whole scene, edge to edge. Ah. Then it's that is not possibly the good yeah. thing i'm not sure if anyone's seen the uh uh joe biden's uh, <laughs> photos i don't know it was very uh, uh it went viral uh, about i think last month it, it, it was shot with an ultra oh, yeah. wide angle lens and the people were all distorted oh, yes. <laughs> so yes yeah it was it uh, was the, was the one with the with uh with uh jimmy carter was it was it Jimmy Carter? And I think what? I think it might have been. I, yes. I don't know. It, it, it was it was. Biden. Well, Biden. It was but Biden, anyways, yes. but anyways. Yes. Yeah, it was Biden. There was one question about uh, which uh, uh, focal length of lava lenses would you use for vlogging? You've done Ooh. that. You, you're more experienced with vlogging than I am. W which one would seven you five. get? You have well, you have the seven and a half, so you would no, get I, that. I have, I, like I said, because I, I, I try all of them. I mean, I have the 7.5, I did test, you know, I reviewed the 10 and, and also the 9.5 and, and the 17. I literally reviewed most of the lower lenses before. 7.5 is by far my favorite for vlogging, simply because I don't have to stretch my arm out because it's so wide. You know, even if my, I have my, I can't try to show you my arm, but I can't show you my arm. There you go. Even if I don't, like you know fully extended my arm and I, even if I just you know come back a little bit I can still see basically from my chest to my head and that's how wide this is and this is really good but you know when you vlog with the 7.5 obviously you know there are there's still uh, there are still a few uh, precautions that you have to remember is that uh, 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 things that we already mentioned about distortion so you make sure that you you're always more or less in the center of the frame otherwise you basically distort your faces and things a little bit but uh, but in video is is totally fine because if you're holding your camera correctly when you when you vlog, and uh, 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 this is this is totally fine, and you will find yourself actually less tiring because you don't have to stretch out your arm. If you use a let's say ten millimeters or even using the the, the twelve millimeters, you will find yourself really have to stretch out 
especially especially if you don't have a long arm and uh, uh, so I, I I'm five foot eight so um, so this is really good if I, I, I bend my arm I can still see half my almost half of my body and uh, if you are you know slightly shorter and uh, yeah this will be valuable and basically critical for you um, uh, any slightly tight uh, you know closer lenses it will become a problem and uh, you may have to uh, you know really stretch out or maybe you've been using an extension like a like a pole or something to get your to get you kind of half body because you don't always always want to show just the head if you if you vlog could be too close and uh, so just just be mindful of that and another good thing about vlogging using 7.5 is that because I bend my arm so I'm not fully extended I can adjust the uh, everything if I need to because I'm close to the camera and I'm close to the lens I can adjust the focus I can adjust the the aperture the setting I can even adjust the empty filter that attached to it so if you're fully stretched out if you want to change something you have to kind of bring the camera back into you to do something so just be mindful of that so that's why I think 7.5 is really a perfect answer for vlogging that's how I see it okay. yeah um, we we got reminded that we need to set the discount code. Don't oh, forget yes. That. Okay, go and Peter then. <laughs> Do you have the discount code? I think you say, it. I think you, I have it, but I think it's better that you say it so that the letters go right. If I start to pronounce, you know, the letters, they might be <laughs> mixed. But I might say if it is, because I always miss J and, and J and, and you know, stuff, whatever. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Uh, I'm going to type it's, it it's out on, on the screen. I'm going to type it on oh, screen. Okay. So, uh, Jenny, that's, that's... is it? Uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, is it case sensitive? Uh, because you got capital J there. Just double confirming it, and hopefully yeah. that uh, it's not case yes. sensitive. It is. Yeah. If it is, then you have to follow exactly what I type on the screen <laughs> in a minute. But it is, is no. Jim Pet. Is Jim Pet? Uh, well, it's supposed to be Pete, but Jim Pet zero yep. five. Yeah, that's what it is. So, uh, so how much discount is it, Peter? I think it was five percent. 5% discount if you on use anything code on, on anything on any lens on any on lens any yes lens. right okay, or anything so yes I'm gonna put it on screen now so this is the discount code I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so this is the discount code you can use it's Jim pet fifth oh sorry not 50 zero five okay so <laughs> my yeah. okay zero five not five zero otherwise it'll be 50 percent discount so don't use that code yeah <laughs> so zero five and uh, so yeah, yeah case sensitive so it's capital j i m p e t zero five that's the discount code for the lower lenses so you can use uh because you are such good audience and good fans and followers and fans of lower peter and myself jimmy and uh, you are awarded with this discount code. I'm gonna put this in the description after the stream so you can always come yeah. back if you uh, do anything it's, if you if it doesn't yeah. work and it's in the go to La and it's in the Lawa. chat on and it <laughs> yeah it's on it's also in the chat on both channels so all right cool 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 yeah it's on the it's on the chat as well so there. you guys can see it that's no problem so good I think uh, it it's fantastic and uh, it's a good turnout and uh, really enjoy that so I hope that you guys uh, uh, enjoy that as well if you got any other question and uh, you you can um, maybe give another five minutes to you for you guys to ask uh, both Peter and myself. And uh, obviously afterward, you know our contacts. If you're already following uh, our channels and other social media platforms, you are very welcome to contact us directly. And uh, if you've got any technical design thing that you want to ask about uh, the lenses or any other products, uh, you can obviously contact Lauer directly. They are on Facebook. Uh, they are on, you know, Instagram everywhere. You can, you know, their socials are already everywhere anyway, so it's very easy to find them. Um, just search for Lauer lenses, you will find them. Um, oh, yeah. Other than that, um, I think that uh, it's... Or, it's, or it's if you very... come across... And yeah. if you come across Venus Optics, that's the same thing. That's actually the manufacturer of Lava lenses. So you might yes. you might come across Indeed. Venus Optics too, or but, or Venus lenses. That's something that they also use. But they're good, you know. Like uh, uh, I think. Oh I think, yes, um, you know, I like them. You know, we are photographers, and uh, uh, you know, of course, you know, we are Olympus guys. Uh, both Peter and myself, and uh, but we are Michael Fourth shooters. You know, we we you know 
we're all within the alliance at the Michael Force Alliance. You know, we support each other because this is you know healthy for the for the, for the actual community, healthy for the overall Michael Force uh, 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 users, and that's why I support everything Michael Force. And uh, and Lawa is being oh, yeah. definitely one of the one of the main players now. I mean, I can really call them as one of the main players in the Michael Force because their lenses are definitely high quality. Uh, as you can see from both Peter and, my, and, and myself, uh, all the videos that we've done with the Lauer lenses reviews, uh, we praise them because they, they are really generally improving every single time uh, when they have a new product out. And uh, you can see the image quality is improving as well. And uh, no doubt about that, you know, we're going to show you more future Lauer Micro Four Third lenses. And uh, remember, remember, uh, if you want to learn more about these stuff in the future and, and uh, get first hand review and images and subscribe to Peter and myself's channel and uh, that will be helpful and also uh, you, you can share our videos everywhere you know I can uh, troll everybody's site and just put our links to it and hopefully that will increase our view counts <laughs> yeah and don't forget that uh, Lava has these meeting the masters 2021 videos on their channel some more there will be more to come and there are there is already six before this is done this is the episode seven actually so there are six episodes yep. of the dif different yeah, you know different approach and different genres of photography so yep and if you want check to out see those us back too. here very soon you know if you want to see us back very soon remember to uh, just just keep going back to Lauer's uh, Facebook page and keep saying we want Peter and Jimmy <laughs> we want Peter and Jimmy just repeat a hundred <laughs> times you know and then we will come back all right <laughs> oh yes <laughs> okay exactly right I think it is time's up. It's one hour, and uh, this is the allocated time that we yeah. have for this particular stream. And uh, and it is very early in in Hong Kong, which Jenny, you know, we have to say thank you to Jenny, you know, to wake up, you know, really early for this stream. Yeah. And uh, uh, so thank you, Jenny. Thank you and, so much. Uh, really, really and, appreciate and thank, your and, effort. And thanks, Lava, for having us. And yes, thanks so yeah, much, Lava, for you. having us. It's it's been it's been an honor to be. And also, it's been an honor to talk to you, Jimmy. It's always always fun and great <laughs> like i like i always said when i started youtube the jimmy was one of those channels that i watched and learned well it's a great you. channel you know, like uh, it's it's fun you know like uh, uh peter and i are, are, are you know great friends you know we we met in london you know hopefully you know when the travel restriction is lifted i'll be able to go to finland and, and finally meet uh, uh peter and see his beautiful landscape and uh, rather than just keep seeing my backyard here so it'll be quite good <laughs> yeah and then there was one thing that i said i'm not not sure if this is proper to say, but there's one thing that I said before we started this, that, that whoever has the most viewers during live stream buys the other one a beer. And, <laughs> and I have to say that I think I lost, I think I lost this one. So next time we'll be, the beer is on me. <laughs> oh, I, di I didn't even check. I have no idea because I'm not seeing anything. At the yeah, moment. <laughs> I just, I just, yeah, I just, I just checked because I just remember that what I said. So I had to check. Oh, oh, I, I, yeah, I, I really just is, see it. it someone just come up with roman roman john you know roman roman's been on both of our channel and so hi roman you are a little oh, bit yes. late but don't worry you can always go back to uh, to do the beginning of this replay and uh, see what we talked about the new lens and also ultra wide angle lenses in general and see some sample images between peter and myself and uh, yes and you can see this text right in front of the screen here is the discount code you can use uh, on lawa's website to buy any lenses uh, uh uh from them you know and get five percent discount and they're very generous of the of lauer not only having us but also giving you guys some some discount as well and uh, i think i'm going to use that code to buy software as well that's quite good you know and uh and uh <laughs> that's a good deal yeah <laughs> yeah that's a good deal maybe i'll get maybe i'll get the the new 7.5 and that means i will have all of all so you don't you don't, you don't have yeah you don't have it enough seven and a half millimeter lenses probably you well, only have two or three well, you need no, the fourth this, one this, oh. This this one is for for my gimbal, so I like using this one because it's the the cine version, so is 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 a good one. And then the the original, I th I think the original is different, you know. Oh yeah, M maybe just touch base a little bit on that before we finish. You know, between the two, which one would you prefer, the full menu or the now the auto version? Not this way. Yep, you can see both of them. So, Peter, what, which one would you would you say you would prefer? You know, as a as a photographer, the new. That, uh, well, for for photo for photography, the new one of definitely the because it has the the electronics. You can you have the EXIF and you have the help with the uh, manual focus automatically. But for video, I would get of course the video version because it has the aperture ring, which is pretty and the and the you know the gears to, to use follow focus with if you need. 
Yeah, I, I, I totally yeah. agree. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I saw I saw one comment popped up actually earlier, and uh, they said that uh, he preferred this version because uh, he said it's it's more hands on, and then uh, uh, is is something that he can set a uh, zone focus. So yeah, I need to touch base on this. You can do zone focus with the new lens as well because the the actual distance scale is also on the lens. So there's no difference with the old lens or the new lens. And uh, if you know your aperture setting, you know how to use zone focus. It's the same thing. You set the the, the actual focus, uh, the aperture, you know, with the camera itself, and it's set. And the you know you can do the same thing no, no matter what. So the distance scale is there there anyway. So you just read by it and you know exactly what you need to do. So it's the same thing. So there's no difference there. So if you are worried about the difference, that there is no difference. It just one have a physical aperture ring you can turn. One you just have to control through the camera itself. Uh, apart from that, there's you, you, nothing there. But the good thing is what Peter just said. You have the auto magnify if you set it to it. If you have uh, you have auto peaking if you have already set it in the in the in the camera itself. Everything is automated because it's now the camera knows exactly what the lens is doing, and uh, uh, that's that's the convenience you get. In the old days, we have to customize uh, buttons to do that. And uh, uh, so if you still like that that kind of you know very hands-on experience yeah you can you can still use the full menu in Lawa still Lawa is still selling the old lens uh, in parallel with the newer lens um so you can use the older one if you wish and uh, but the new one definitely have a lot of convenience there and uh, uh, uh makes you know manual shooting is definitely a joy i think in my opinion yep okay so right but i think we are i think yep. we have our go oh, sorry done i think <laughs> yes yeah i think we're covered everything that we're supposed to and about an hour we were supposed to do this it went a bit over time but that's usually what happens with live streams no problem with Absolutely. that and every thanks time everyone Peter, for being here there's been a, been a nice nice crowd <laughs> yeah it's been a nice crowd and in, in in different channels and and, and and thanks for lava for for having us it was it was a pleasure thank you Thank you, Laowa, and thank you, and Jenny, thanks. once again. And you know, without you waking up, then, then we won't be here. <laughs> yeah, and thank you, Jimmy. It was a pleasure again. Yeah, no, thank you, Peter, and uh, it's always really nice to chat to you. We're gonna, Peter and I, are gonna do some stream later. You know, we talked about it before the stream started, and uh, you know, stay tuned for yes. our channel. We're gonna, you know, Peter will be our my guest, and I'll be Peter's guest. We're gonna do different things all together. So stay tuned for the next few yes. months, and uh, we're gonna have some exciting and fun stuff. You know, and uh, let's let's do something together. Yep. Okay, great stuff. Right, so no, thank you very up. much for tuning in. I am going to uh, end the stream now. So uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. Uh, have a good weekend. And also, and also, and uh, uh, keep shooting. Keep shooting. And uh, that's what we oh, want yes, to do. Oh, yes, that's important. That's important. Okay. All right. Bye. See you later.